conceptual perspective. People talk about it. All of the elements. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everything is going well this weekend. Um, it's Sunday. For me, it's the beginning of a new week. Uh, this is where I sit down and I gather my thoughts and get myself together and prepare mentally, emotionally uh, for the week that's coming, uh, setting my expectations, uh, setting some weekly goals, but just simply mentally preparing my man, myself to see the positive and the powerful in life, uh, to keep myself from focusing on all of the challenges and the, and the obstacles uh, that are around me uh, and giving them more power than and, and attention than they deserve. Uh, I prime and prep every day, but during the week, uh, for each week, I prime and prep as well. Um, look, this is going to be real brief. I'm going to come with you. This is one of those transparent moments uh, I want you to really, really, truly get into. I want to remind you guys, if you have not enrolled in the 30 day your best life challenge so that you can end this year on a positive note despite all the things that are going on i encourage you to look in the description box or the post box of this video depending on where you actually see it and enroll in that 30-day challenge i am enjoying working with people that i probably would not normally get a chance to work to work with those who know me and know what I do know that I'm exceptional at what I do, but I'm, I'm, I'm pricey, relatively speaking, for the average person. So a lot of people uh, express a lot of interest in working with me and just simply unable to. And I created this challenge for that purpose. Um, the, the enrollment is affordable for anybody who is serious about change. Uh, anybody can make this happen and get in and that's 30 days that's three sessions that alone is worth it all those three sessions um, it's three sessions it's a personal plan it's personal accountability it's all of those things in 30 days creating a habit that will change your life basically what it boils down to if you haven't gotten uh, enrolled in that 30-day challenge do it today make a commitment to do something different to create a different result and take it from there. With that being said, look, I'm gonna jump right into what I'm here to talk to you about. I mean, being a person, number one, that uh, is heavily engaged in research, it's a part of what I do. I cannot be who I am without understanding at a very intricate level uh, the things that impact the behavior of people, uh, the psychology of life in every aspect possible and how it impacts us physically, emotionally, uh, in our health physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and so much more. But I, I, I'm also an observations. I am always observing people as they go about their days, uh, not just those that come to me, but just people that I see in passing and I have uh, casual to intense dealings with i pay attention to them and i see them and one of the things that i have noticed is that we are a generation of complainers we are a generation of people who see everything in the worst possible light and instead of looking for ways to change it we whine about it we complain about it we find what's wrong with everything there are some people out there who have made it a literal career a, 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 a life choice career to be a naysayer to sit up and talk about everything that's going wrong not only in their own lives but in anybody that will give them an ear they will sit around and tell you why you can't do something why something is horrible oh my god look what's happening to you the old oh, woe is me thing let me tell you something one thing that the challenges that I've faced in life have taught me is the gravity of the brevity of life. Just how brief life is, just how fast life passes by. I look up today and I realize, man, I have a 35-year-old daughter who's been married for almost 15 freaking years. And it seems like just yesterday I was coming out of high school, going into college. It seems like just yesterday I was in my 20s and the world was in front of me. And I look up now and it seems like in the blink of an eye, 
uh, I've got more years behind me than I have in front of me. And I thank God because I've given everything, I've given life everything I have. I have no regrets. I have no fears. I have no apprehensions about the closing in of the end because I've given life everything. But let me explain something to you. In the process of going through this life, I have been introduced to my mortality on more than one occasions. Early in life, dealing with violence, I, I, I was introduced to it. Then uh, uh, several motorcycle accidents uh, in my, in, in my uh, 20s and 30s introduced me to my mortality. Watching a bunch of friends in 2004 die from motorcycle accidents. The summer of 2004 was like crazy when it came to how many friends I lost on bikes. And, and, and that, that, that did it. And then um, as recently as this year, five freaking heart attacks in a week. It introduced me to the brevity of life. And what that did is it it, it, it reminded me that I don't have the time and energy investing in anxiety and worry and stress and, and trepidation and apprehension based on these perceived challenges. What I can tell you is from my own studies is that 40% of what we worry about at a minimum never happens. The 80% of the things that do happen don't turn out nearly as bad as we thought they would. When it really boils down to it, about 8% of our worries have true significance. The rest of it is just us building this mountain of fear and apprehension and stress based off of an anticipated result that we actually have the ability to control. More importantly, I have studied and I understand that how we perceive things creates the avenue and pathway to our realities. Let me explain to you what I mean. Uh, there was a study done of some Yale graduates some years ago, and they took them and what they did is they separated them into groups, the pessimists and the optimists. Now, what was, what, what was weird is the pessimists, when gauged on things you can actually measure in their lives, were more accurate in assessing their true reality. When they talked about what was going on in their lives, they were more accurate and close in assessing the true reality than the optimists. The optimists always saw everything way better than it was. The pessimists pretty much saw it pretty much right along the lines. You know, you can look at it and measure. They were a lot closer to their reality than the optimist was. But this is what happens. 20 years later, they bring them back, all of the surviving uh, uh, participants in this study. And they bring them back. And here's what they found. The pessimist was pretty much right along the lines of what they thought their life would turn out to be. The optimist literally created the life they thought they had initially. They literally paved the pathway through their perceptions of what was there because they did not see a boogeyman around every corner. They stepped out and they created the life that they had envisioned in their mind that they didn't really have at the time they saw it. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is you sit around, you walk around, and all you do is see the negativity. You have become a victim in your own world, a victim of your own thinking, a victim of your own anticipation. I've told you this on more than one occasion. God life, the universe, however you want to refer to it, will only meet you at the level of your expectations, never higher. What you are expecting from life, what you are whining and complaining about is what you will actually create because you have given it so much of your attention. You don't focus on what you don't want. You don't focus on what is wrong. You focus on what is what, what it is that you desire, what you are trying to create, because in that you are literally creating energy for creation. You are creating an image and vision. It is the vision that you literally have a map to the future of what it is you desire. But if all you're focusing on is what's wrong, now you think life is happening to you. You think that life is happening. And when you think life is happening to you, you have given power to your circumstances and you have surrendered your personal sovereignty. Life isn't happening to you. Stop thinking that. Life is responding to you. Life is happening because of you. When you start to understand that you have far more control in the outcomes of your life than you are giving yourself credit for, you will start making the necessary changes that will flip your life upside down and give you a positive. I'm not telling you you're going to escape challenges. Challenges are there for a reason. 
I, I think it was Will Smith that stood up and said that God put fear. I mean, God put everything worth having in life on the other side of fear. It's not about ease. This life isn't about ease. This life is about conquering things, overcoming things, pushing through things, persevering, being persistent, living through. Everybody wants the promise, but nobody wants to endure the process. Everybody wants this promise of their design, promise of their purpose, promise of their destiny, promise of their relationship with God. But nobody wants to go through the process. Let me explain something to you for those of you who haven't been following me for long. For those of you who have, you know what I'm about to say. Process always precedes promise. You don't get the promise without first enduring the process. You don't get to step out there and claim something and you haven't put in the work to have it. Most of the things that you don't have is because you haven't made the sacrifices. You haven't put in the work. You haven't been persistent. You fold every time a little pressure comes in. You sit up and balk back into this little corner of comfort. Every time you feel a little uneasy about some things that have to be done, some of the decisions that have to be made, some moves that have to be taken. You don't want to sit up and go through the process. You can't have the promise without the process. Man, with everything I've gone through, and I think about how many times life tried to take me out. And in any one of those instances, I could be gone from this place. And all I would have had at that point was what I had done to that point to build, to leave my legacy. I decided that I'm going to live my life on full, that I'm going to die on E. Why? Because I'm not going to leave anything left undone. I'm not going to leave anything not finished. I'm not going to leave my potential on the table. I'm going to take every ounce of what's inside of me and I'm going to live my life every day because I might not wake up in the morning. And if I don't wake up in the morning, I want what I have left behind that night to speak for me. Stop your whining. Stop your complaining. Stop your oh woe is me. You are so much stronger than you think. I can tell you, I've had some unbelievable highs, but I've been flat on my back and I've been everywhere in between. But one thing has not changed at one iota at any of those times, and it's an understanding of who I am and my destiny and why I'm here. I'm not controlled by my circumstances. I have a clear view of who I am and I am acquainted with my purpose and I am assured of my destiny and I walk in it, I talk in it, I live in it and I take on the challenges of life. People have asked me, I'm going to say this and I'll be done. People have looked at me at some of the most challenging times of my life and they have set up and they said, you're in denial. And I said, why do you say that? So with everything that you're going through, how could you possibly be smiling? With everything that you're going through, how could you possibly be sitting here serving other people in, in, in a situation and in, in homeless shelters and everything with what you're going through right now? How could you possibly have time to give to anybody else? I say, that's what the problem is. You focus on the problem. I don't focus on the problem. I focus on my destiny. See, while I'm operating in this situation, I'm already living in my destiny in the future. My vision, God gave me the ability to see things that are not speak them that in a way that they, that, 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 that they are spoken as if they are. I call things that are not as though they were. I don't call them as I see them. I call them as I demand them. I call them as I create them. That's the difference. I say, see, the problem is most of you aren't acquainted with the direct connection, spiritual connection that you have with the most high and the creator. There's something in my spirit. It communicates back and forth. The spirit of God, spirit of the almighty, the spirit of, spirit of the creator is communicating with my spirit constantly. That's that energy and vibration we constantly talk about. And there's this awareness that comes from it. So when I'm sitting down and I'm looking at the circumstances that I'm going through, there's something in my spirit that disagrees with my circumstances. There's something in my spirit that says this isn't the final answer. There's something in my spirit that won't allow me to be shaken by circumstances and situations. You've got to stop letting your situations and your circumstances dictate your position, dictate your mindset, dictate your anticipation and expectations of what to come. 
Faith should be in the midst of everything you have in your heart that says, I, I see how it looks, but I know how it's going to end up. Life's too short. I'm going to know, look, I'm going to check out of here. I wouldn't even mean to take it there, but look, it's up to you. It is absolutely up to you. How are you going to take on life in this world? It's up to you. There are going to be circumstances. There are going to be situations. There are going to be people who don't like you. There are going to be people who try to stop you. There are going to be all of these challenges. But there's something inside of you planted there by the creator that says you're built for this. It's time to walk in it. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Don't forget, if you have not enrolled in the Your Best Life 30-Day Challenge, now is the time to get there. We're not going into 2021 carrying all this baggage. We're going into 2021 with an intent to shake up the world. And I challenge you to be a part of it. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. As I always say, I'm going to live my life on full and die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. Yeah, sounded better than Jay. People talk about it. All of the elements.